this antenna formed the start of quite an overcomplicated chain of relays that were used to get high peak radio signal through the hilly terrain of northwest Derbyshire. To get to the bottom of things, we're going to take a journey. The original system was quite complex, and things have changed multiple times over the years, the most recent change being the buyout by Greatest Hits Radio, a company that seems to be sucking the life out of independent local radio, one station at a time. I'm going to take you along as we go on a tour of the sites. The trip also posed a couple of questions that you may be able to answer along the way too. I started the journey under the impression that each step in the chain is fed by the previous transmitter, i.e. a site picks up its feed via RF from the previous site on one frequency and then rebroadcasts it on another. This doesn't appear to be the case anymore and it seems that all sites were fed by fibre at the end of the high peak radio days, something that continues today in the era of greatest hits radio. So we begin our journey in this residential street in Chapel and Frith, a village in the borough of High Peak in Derbyshire. This was the first step in the complex chain. On the side of the building occupied by High Peak windows is this large Yagi. This is what I believe to be the current transmit antenna for Greatest Hits Radio on 106.6. Above that is a vertical. I wasn't expecting to see the vertical here and it's a later addition to the Yagi. Its presence presented me with my first question, what's it for? It would make sense that the vertical would be the transmit aerial, covering the village omnidirectionally, and that the Yagi would be the link or rebroadcast antenna pointing to the next step in the chain, Booksworth. Now that all sites are fed by fibre, this Yagi appears to be the transmit antenna that still just so happens to point towards Booksworth. If anyone has the answer to this, then let me know in the comments. The transmitter output power here is just 40 watts, and the signal is designed to cover Chapel and Lifrith. Before we head over to Buxton, there's one more point to note about this site. This isn't the original High Peak Radio Transmitter site. That was just round the corner, literally 47.5 metres away on this building. This is the former High Peak Radio studio, and Google Street View shows the old antenna bracket on the side of the building, which had unfortunately been demolished when I went round there to film. After the merger with Greatest Hits, this building became the station's new transmitter site. There's no studio here anymore. So it's time to get back on the road and head to Booksworth. The original High Peak Radio site was here, at a farm just north of Booksworth. We can see a guide mast in a field belonging to the farm that housed the lower receive antenna pointing back towards Chapel and Lifrith. Remember, Chapel and Lifrith transmits on 106.6, so Booksworth received its feed on this frequency and then relayed it out on 103.3 using the transmit antenna at the top of the mast pointing towards Booksworth and Whaley Bridge. The advertised coverage of Booksworth transmitter is actually New Mills and Whaley Bridge. April 2020 saw the Booksworth transmitter moved from here to Hawkehurst Farm, closer to Whaley Bridge than Booksworth, but keeping the same name. This is the new location. The transmitter here is just 20 watts from a dipole on the roof. I had a nice chat with the farmer, but he was reluctant to let me take any close-up photos of the antenna for security reasons. I tried to alleviate his concerns, but it's his land, and that's absolutely fair enough. I could only see the transmit dipole and no receive antenna, which further supports the possibility of a fibre feed here. Booksworth still transmits Greatest Hits Radio on 103.3. 
From here we head over to Buxton, where there's a lot more going on, and I finally got confirmation that all Greatest Hits radio feeds are fed by fibre. This is the receive antenna pointing back towards Buxworth. The absence of a back reflector on this Yagi confirms that it's obviously defunct. The antenna has weathered and is beginning to deteriorate, but it doesn't matter because Buxton receives its feed via fibre. It would have received its feed from Buxworth on 103.3 and then rebroadcast it out on 106.4. The transmit side is still the same today, and it took me a while to find the dipole nestled towards the top of the tower. There's lots going on at Buxton, so if you'd like a detailed transmitter tour on everything here, then let me know in the comments. Before we go to our next hop in the chain, there's something I want to show you. This is what was Great Rocks Dale, a dry valley in the Derbyshire Peak District, known for its extensive quarrying and now dominated by Tunstead Quarry. It's a mammoth limestone quarry that's been worked since 1929, with about 5.5 million tonnes extracted each year. Trains as well as lorries are used to transport things out of the quarry, and here we can see a GB Rail Freight Class 66 diesel electric freight locomotive resting in a siding of the rail yard. The rail yard at Tunstead is hidden from public view. Now we're back on the road again, heading through this limestone gorge in the Peak District of Derbyshire. Known as Winnett's Pass, the name is a corruption of wind gates due to the swirling winds through the pass. It lies west of the village of Castleton in the National Trust High Peak Estate, and local legend has it that the pass is haunted by a young couple, Alan and Clara, who eloped in 1758, only to be robbed and murdered by miners as they headed through on their way to the Peak Forest Chapel. The miners hid their bodies in a mine shaft, where they were discovered ten years later. Anyway, five minutes out of the pass, we come to the next hop in the chain, Hope Valley. This site did use a Yagi pointed towards Buxton to receive its feed on 106.4, and then a vertical to rebroadcast to the village of Hope Valley on 103.3 at 35 watts. Nowadays, with the fibre feed, all that's required is the vertical to transmit the signal out. Hope Valley is situated on a private residence, so close-up photos weren't possible. However, you can just about make out the vertical antenna alongside a flagpole on the building's turret. Before our final transmitter, let's make a quick stop at Hope Valley Cement Works. The plant here started its first full year of production in 1929. Its current operator, Breeden, runs two cement plants, with a total annual capacity in excess of 2 million tonnes, the other being near Dublin. The Hope Valley site is mostly self-contained, with its own shale and limestone quarries adjacent, with only fuel and small amounts of additives needed to be brought in. More than half of the cement at Hope Works is transported in bulk by rails to depots elsewhere in the UK, a job in part made possible by shunters like this. This is a Class 20 named Sir George Earl, and it's the number 2 shunter at Hope Cement Works. It wasn't long before the driver climbed aboard and the train went on its journey down the Hope Cement branch, with 8 tankers in tow. Our final stop on today's journey is Glossop. This two-element Yagi is the greatest hits radio transmitter antenna. It radiates on 106.4 at 250 watts to the towns of Glossop and Hayfield. I originally believed that this Yagi, which I mentioned in a previous video, was the former receive antenna. However, all sources of information point towards a line or fibre feed having always been in place here. Perhaps this antenna was put in place for testing, a backup, or a planned link that was never implemented. It points towards Buxworth. Chapel and Frith and Hope Valley are out of sight, and Buxton transmits on the same frequency as Glossop, so if it was used for a rebroadcast link, Buxworth is the only logical option. All I know is that the bent element here doesn't matter, as the site is definitely fed by fibre today. If anyone can shed any light on this, then let me know in the comments. Glossop is the last stop, and it doesn't rebroadcast to another transmitter. So that concludes our tour of the former High Peak Radio, now Greatest Hits Radio, transmitter setups around Derbyshire. If you'd like to see more transmitter tours, then I'll leave a link to a playlist in the description below.